for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight. Nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog app. Use code MACECAM or STAT to do up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a free pick. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. STAT Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Mace, what's up, Killer, man? Killer, what's good, man? Shit, I'm good. How you doing? Really good, man. That's what's up, man? Good to hear that. Great to hear. I was going in the store today. I couldn't, um, I was going to buy some lotion, but they said all the, um, the baby oil was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so. Pause. <laughs> what, what you was going to do with the pause? I was just going to get right. some lotion for my right. hands. Basically, right. basically, what you're trying to say is like the pandemic. You might as well just get it for us all gone. Just, like, just have it. Pause. I, I ain't mad at that. You know, last week it was crazy as Johnson and Johnson was trending. Yeah, I ain't, that was crazy. White told me I should have bought some stock. Yeah, and Johnson and Johnson, what? they ain't going nowhere. Pause. Baby powder, all type of shit. Johnson, <laughs> Johnson, Johnson been around. Johnson, Johnson, they got everything. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Lubrication is what they do. Pause. Okay. Well, but then at the same time. Powder ain't lubrication. They got both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. They've coined it the market. Is there another powder besides Johnson & Johnson? I I don't know. I didn't it's, check it's, that. It's, no, like, I think that's it. I just was wondering. It's like, they, I they not know. They that market. Yeah, they, yeah they might got CVS or CVS brand, but no other. Yeah, no no frills. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> We have a problem, and it's the Bengals. The Bengals are 0-3 after losing to the Commanders, 38-33. to So I know it's still early, but do you guys think the Bengals have even a chance to even make it to the playoffs, looking at how they've been performing so far? Well, I'm actually going to take Cam theory. You know, it's early in the season. There's only They're only 0-3, and there's 14 more games to go. But what I would like to uh, look at is that Joe Burrow got his numbers for underdog fantasy. I mean, for underdog. And all of mine's checked out. You know, even Chase getting those numbers, he checked out. So as long as they're playing good, I think it's still... Um, some room for them to turn this season around. Long as you got Burroughs and Chase playing good in there and in sync with each other, I think when you lose that chemistry, then it's time to really start worrying. But until then, I think they could get around this. Because remember, Chase is still throwing probably in that same tantrum mode where he's not getting paid. You know, and when people are disgruntled and they're stars, the worst thing you could have in the in the um in the locker room is a disgruntled star. It's okay if somebody disgruntled, but they're not the main person. But when the main person is disgruntled, the attitude is contagious. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here looking right now, actually, and Jamar Chase was at, were underdog 65 yards, and you went over and he had 62, so you actually didn't make the you right didn't? choice. No, he had 62, so you're actually oh. wrong about that one. And I was right because I said that he would score lower because he he would have a tantrum, like you said. He wasn't on point. So, Cole Cam is back in the building. <laughs> you feel like How many yards coach. Chase had? 62. Seven, seven, seven. Uh, you know what? No, you're right, Murder. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm, oh. so, I'm totally sorry. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah, you stand corrected. I, you do. You're, <laughs> yeah, you know, do, everybody wrong, make mistakes. You're right, you know? you're right, Murder. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I didn't know he was, he rushed this many yards, so I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, absolutely right. 
Still a loss. Only thing, you're, so Cole Mace is in effect today. <laughs> we'll use Cole Mace today. Yeah, 100% correct. But what I will disagree with Mace on is I think they're in trouble, man. You think and they're in trouble? I li- and I like Cincinnati. You know, I, I pumped Joe Burrow. That's my guy. Look, the numbers look great. 324 yards. I'm totally sorry, everybody out there. Mace is 100% correct. Six catches, 118 yards uh, for Jamar Chase. But when you lose to Washington, uh, the, yeah, command, the commanders, the commanders it, it seems like it's no continuity, it's no rhythm, it's no camaraderie. And when you have a dysfunctional team, it's going to linger on. So, sorry, not even to correct y'all. I feel like we should redo that part because uh, Jamar Chase has 118 yards. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys are talking about another Chase. Chase Brown has too much. Yeah, that's what no, but but I'm looking I know I'm looking now. Base was right. You don't have to yeah. do it over. I was wrong. Okay. I don't mind being wrong. It's cool. Okay. I don't have to you don't have to correct me. Okay. I'm cool when I'm wrong. Because I'm not wrong that often. Let me know when you're ready. Keep that Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Like, you'll have to correct me. I was, that's, that's why I was looking at Chasing when I was uh when I was looking at stats, because to be honest, I didn't watch the game. So I was looking at the wrong thing, and Mace was right, and I was saying that I was wrong. But when I'm looking at Jamar Chase, he's right. It was six um, receiving, uh, six receptions, 118 yards, and Chase Brown had seven carries and 62 yards. Pardon me, everybody. But I don't think it's any continuity. Um, I don't like it. I don't think – look, with the Steelers looking like they're playing good, uh, Baltimore is a team I wouldn't be worried about if they were 0-3. Uh, but this doesn't look good. They had no continuity in training camp. Jamal Chase really didn't play in preseason. And I know it's 14 games left, but this doesn't look like they're going to get it together. Hopefully they do. You know, I'm rooting for them. Uh, always rooting for Joe Burrow. I'm a big Joe Burrow fan. But if you have these type of numbers, you're not doing well. Now, this is great offensively, but if you're – the Cincinnati defense, and you're letting the commanders score 38 points. Can't stop a nosebleed. Uh, so we'll see what happens, man. You know, I'm still going to root for you guys, but I don't like losing to uh, Washington. What this will say is that Washington is tied in a division with uh, the Dallas Cow- – I mean, pardon me, with the Philadelphia Eagles and are actually ahead of the Dallas Cowboys right now. Can't wait till Mike comes back <laughs> this week and we can talk about how the commanders – are ahead of the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, another interesting stat. So only six teams since 1979 have made the playoffs after starting 0-3, including one since 2000, and none have won a Super Bowl. So we'll see if the Bengals can get it together, but it's not looking too hot of a start. But then on the opposite end, when we're talking about the commanders, how did you guys feel about Jaden Daniels' performance? Because he did shine. I think a lot of people are looking at him in a different way after performing that well against the Bengals. And what do you think? Uh, Anything with the commanders, and and shout out to Jaden Daniels. He he played really well, 254 yards, two touchdowns. Anything with the commanders has to be proven later on um, for me personally. Uh, I know it was a big, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of us found ourselves woke, black, everything else, no disrespect. <laughs> but, you know, the serious <laughs> Find yourself woke and black. 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 Yeah. Like, <laughs> nah, I was really, not before the pandemic. <laughs> now nah, I'm just saying, like, during the uh, pandemic, niggas, you know, when George Floyd, um, RIP, what happened to him, um, niggas wowed out. And not just black people, a lot of people culturally started paying attention to a lot of things to the point where they said the Redskins' name was racist to where we the Washington team is not the Redskins. One year is the Washington football team, then they changed to the commanders. And I would never want to call a team whatever that particular race is. Like, you don't want to hear the Cleveland niggas. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, the, or, the, Seattle, or the Seattle mooks. So if that offended... That's a really good point, Killer. Right. So, so if you offended... Anybody of uh, Indian heritage, I'm sorry for that, and I'm glad that they changed it. But that's the historic franchise that I'm used to. The commanders are going to have to make a name for themselves. Uh, I think they're off to a great start because I wouldn't think that they would be 2-1 right now. 
But Jaden Daniels played good, but we still have a long way to go. When you talk about racist names, um, and you talked about Dirty Feet, why they didn't change the Tar Heels or like the the Blue Devils, the Duke Blue Devils? That could seem kind of racist. What if we were like the um the Maybe. West Side White Devils? Maybe they cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> the West Side White Devils would be crazy. Maybe they don't have a problem with it. <laughs> How would the Tar Heels be racist? I get, I, I never paid attention to that. I don't know. It just seemed like dirty feet. Dirty you feet, know? yeah. The Tar Heels. Yeah. I mean... I mean, when you start being that sensitive with team names, yeah, you know? no, I, I totally agree with you. I dig it. Like a lot of shit done changed. You know, during the, and speaking of pandemic, pandemic, and not to veer off of sports really quick, but when the pandemic was going on, and it was all the rioting and everything else, it was a lot of companies saying that we're going to donate, like Wendy's, for we're going to donate ten million dollars to the urban community. Or we're going to donate $15 million to, you know, Burger King or whatever to urban community. What urban community yeah. are they donating it to? And to me, that was more like, just don't burn down our shit. We fuck yeah. with y'all niggas. Yeah, we helping out. Yeah, we actually helping out. But um, I think that played a lot. Listen, when it came to that, we didn't have sports because, you know, it was riots. It was a lot was going on. At one time, man, and uh, that was really a, 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 I'm not going to say a great time to be alive, but it was something to witness. I'm happy I actually witnessed that whole scenario from the pandemic to people waking up, you know, quote unquote. Um, Everything was just, it was a a crazy time. Well, as far as Jaden Daniels, so he actually set an NFL rookie record with 91% completion against the Bengals, so... Granted, he was already on the map, but I think that gave him that kind of confidence for other people to kind of see that and recognize it as well. Because kind of like you said, when people see the commanders they are just like, I ain't really going to believe it until I see something. But like already, especially against the Bengals, even though I don't know what they got going on right now, this is a really good way to start for him. So. What do you mean you don't know what they got going on? I don't know. 0-3 is crazy. Yeah. 0-3 oh, is really crazy. Well, but not, not only that, and just to cut you off, this is a really probably a super dope win for him because he beats Joe Burrow. Yes. Who also yeah. went to LSU. So it's one mm. of those situations like, yeah. It's nigga, my time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nigga, you was that nigga. Because Joe Burrow, when you he was, was a, that nigga. When he right. was at LSU, Joe Burrow broke every college record yeah. known to man. So uh, Jalen Daniels having to follow in his footsteps, that's not easy shoes to fill when you go to LSU. But uh, this is definitely bragging rights for him as a LSU uh, alumni. Yeah. Well, cool. shout out to Magic Johnson. This is this is um part of his franchise. Think about that, Mace, is We have to start looking into that. <laughs> <laughs> and no, and I'm not disrespecting Magic, and I'm not acting like I got nowhere near the money Magic Johnson got. But what happens is they start saying, I'm not just talking about Magic. I'm talking about anybody, anybody. of color. They'd be like, yo, they're an owner. And then you find out they own 0.60% yeah. of the team. And you're like, is there, are they really owners or are they using them for a face? Mm. And I'm not saying that's magic because I'm a, you know, magic after his basketball career has climbed mountains and, and, and planted flags, bro. So uh, shout out to magic. But I would love to know how much of the percentage of the commanders he owns because he got ownership in the Dodgers too. Yeah. But what percent, according to you? That's the question. What percent? Right. Okay, so definitely want to discuss some of the games on Sunday because we didn't get to some of them. So the Eagles knocked off the Saints' winning streak, beating them 15-12. to However, the Eagles didn't score any points until the fourth quarter. How are we feeling about the Eagles right now? And we're going to let you go first. Um, I watched that game, actually. And... The Saints gave that game away. It was a tough-nosed defensive game. That was a really great defensive game. A lot of people want to see a lot of points on the board, and they don't respect defense when it's when it's a low-scoring game. So shout out to both them defenses until the end. I believe it was like a minute left. Uh, I know we're a day and yeah. a half out of out out of that game, but I watched it, and it was third and sixteen, and the Eagles were down, and they had the ball. 
And the Saints could have put this game away. I would believe it was less than two minutes, less than a minute 30, third and 16. Whoever drew that play up, the offensive coordinator or the head coach for the Eagles, I'm not sure which one of them drew the play up. Sensational. Uh, cross route. He gets the ball, scores a touchdown. Uh, so the Saints get the ball back with probably a minute and a little less than a minute left. Um, and it's looking like, and the, and the Eagles go up three. So it's looking like if Derek Carr could get them at least to the 35-yard line there in field goal range. Um, they bust some moves going up the field. Derek Carr makes a couple great passes. Yeah, then he's answers, under yeah. distress, and he throws an interception. Uh, I actually were wrong again about this pick because the amount of points that the Saints put up in the first two games, they was looking like an offensive juggernaut, especially how Carl was playing, Kamara was playing. Uh, I thought the Saints were one of these teams this year that's going to average uh, 30 points. Uh, it just didn't happen. The Eagles, they look they look pedestrian. They, it didn't look like a sensational team. It looked like somebody who pulled the game off at the end of the game. Uh, this is two years in, in a row that I'm having concerns about the Eagles, definitely because the year before that, they looked so sensational. And this year... They, they're two and one, but it's not sensational wins as opposed to the year before last when they look like they're going to be this team uh, for years to come. We'll see what happens. You know, a win's a win in the NFL, so they're two and one tied with the Commanders and they're ahead of the Dallas Cowboys as well. But I'm not sure where the Eagles at and then with the Saints losing the way they lost this week, I'm not sure where the Saints were at. I thought the Saints were one of these teams that was going to give the 49ers some problems in the NFC. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I think Philadelphia, one thing about this team last year, they started out the same way. They were winning games. They were ugly games, but they were winning the games. And I think they're on a the path to do the same exact thing. They're going to win games, but it's going to be ugly. It's not going to look spectacular. And it's really not going to turn in, in, into anything in the postseason because, you know, they haven't found that stride and that continuity, Saquon. Looked like he, you know, he turned it on when it when it counted, and and that's good. But even with Derek Carr, when you have players that they're good but they're not great, it, it just showed up at the end of the game. This is why you need superstars because superstars win the game. And I don't think he did anything other than like like being a good player and the luck ran out. That's what it looked like to me because I don't have all that football history. So to me, it's just like a good player. He got to the level he could, but he couldn't get higher than that. And that's why you need a superstar. Um, what I will say is this is like with the 49ers, with the 49ers being hurt, um, the Lions lost already. The NFC really looks like it's kind of up for grabs after this uh first three weeks it's no team you know I was saying the Saints but it's yeah, like it's dominant who is gonna pull away in the NFC and um we'll see when these weeks when we have weeks to come now well it definitely depends on when 49ers get healthy you got Kittles hurt you got McCaffrey hurt Debo's hurt and this matters this matters mm -hmm. Brock Purdy is playing decent he's playing really well but those three players matter offensively we haven't talked about Ayuk RP OJ that's his man yeah one time he wanted that money uh we haven't screamed his name yet I'm not sure if he had a great game or not but he hasn't been talked about and <clears throat> this matters uh what I'll say right now after three weeks I have no clear cut answer for who would be even in the NFC championship let alone the Super Bowl yeah, when it comes down to health on a team, one of the issues with the health on these football teams is that p players are not coming to summer camp, I mean, or um, training camp. And that's a part of the strength and conditioning, which turns around and, and leads to a lot of these injuries. So um, even as you brought that up, Killer, that's the first thing came to mind that niggas got to start going to training camp. We can't keep taking training camp off and then you're just going to jump in there with people that's been training for three and four weeks. And then when you get hurt, because health is a part of winning. Like when people are championship teams, it's because they stayed healthy at the right time. And the reason why some team loses is because 
They're hurt when they really need to be healthy. I know if OJ was here, he would say, man, you got to grasp on the obvious. But if it was obvious, everybody would go to training camp. Yeah. Yeah, and lastly, I'll say this before wrapping up for me anyway. Nobody would have thought that the only two undefeated teams in the NFC would be the Vikings and the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> we could have bet anything. <laughs> Whoever bet that on underdog is up. Shout out to you. Yeah, because yeah. nobody. Those are the last two teams you would have picked to be undefeated after week three. Yeah, but that's the funness of football because it's always unpredictable. I will say, even though the Eagles did win this game, they just make a lot of silly mistakes that I think goes down to coaching. Nick Sirianni is really going to have to step it up because even in the game versus the Saints, they were one on three on fourth down. So Eagles fan Joe really needs to be thanking Saquon Barkley because I don't know how he's been able to pull through a lot of the plays that he has. But it's been great for y'all. But it's not going to continue to be great if something don't change. So hopefully we see some shift. You hating, on, you hating on the Eagles? I'm not hating. I just think that they have a lot more potential and we're not seeing that yet. But that's kind of like that slow burn that they have. And it's like, why? We don't need to do that. You and White seem to be very like confident because y'all got this little 3-0. Yeah, Dang, like, you would be too. You see how that sitting <laughs> back? Would be She's too. Like, Yo. It's a great day. Slow when you say burn. it's a time to be alive, what a time to be alive. It's a great day. <laughs> it's a great week. You celebrating <laughs> at three weeks? You were celebrating at one week. Exactly. Okay, I see exactly. where you're going with it. Keep that energy. I will. The energy is kept. You'll see it every <laughs> week. <laughs> week 10. I'll check back with you on week yeah. 10. Hopefully I'm still okay. We'll see what happens. Five and five. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that and if we're not like I should have made like some sort of bet with y'all because if we hey, five and five six and four we won't be guys we're just getting started okay so the Lions beat the Cardinals 20 to 13 despite not scoring in the second half how did you guys feel about this game and then are you guys still team Lions or you guys feel like it's gonna go away eventually mix there's a lot of people calling me every day about the lions even online people like oh what you got to say about the lions i'm like bro listen it's this is not the time to talk about the lions like cam always said this is what they do in the postseason that's gonna matter y'all could buy silver boots listen y'all can buy silver and blue pom-poms all of that doesn't matter it matters when it when we get after week 17, then we'll talk. Until then, everything else is like recreational. It's like tryouts. We're, we're not here for tryouts. We're here for the playoffs. And we'll, we will be able to see that. I know some people have Detroit Lions going to the, um, the championship. I, I'm not one of them. I'm definitely not one of them. Yeah, look, the Detroit fan base is really excited because they've been not good for so many years. Um, they've been trash. So, you know, let's let's just cut the shit. They have not been good for years. Last year, really the year before last, they finished off really strong but missed the playoffs. Then last year, they made a really good run um, because of a few coaching errors, in my opinion, is the reason they didn't go further. So they're excited about where they're at. Like I said two, three times on this show, you know, for the Detroit Lions to be fourth before the season starts to, to win the Super Bowl is just crazy. It's kind of like the New York Knicks fans to a certain extent. Like, yeah, you know these New York Knicks fans is crazy. So they'll, yeah, nigga, it's high, yeah, nigga. It's their year every year. <laughs> <laughs> every year is their year. So now the Detroit Lions fans feel this way like, yeah, they, we finally got a good team. We finally got a good coach. We finally got a good quarterback. Not saying Matt Strafford wasn't a great quarterback. And not saying that y'all didn't have Megatron over the years. Um, but it's it's the team evolving. So I get where the fan base is coming from. And I actually uh, was wrong about this game. I thought that the Cardinals uh, looked really good the week before. I thought uh, Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr. and um, – Kyle Murray had found some chemistry, and I actually picked them to win this game. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. But as far as the Lion fan base, I get it. I dig it. But Mesa's right. You have to show what's going to happen after the regular season because you guys can't sneak up on people anymore. Me and Larry was actually talking about that before the season started. It was, you know, the Lions used to be able to sneak up on you. It's one of them niggas like, yo, 
You know, if a nigga got a gun, you ain't gonna shoot nobody. He ain't one of them niggas that shoot niggas. He just walking around <laughs> with a gun. Now, now they keeping an eye on you like, nah, they might shoot niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So y'all can't sneak up on anybody anymore. So your expectation level is really high. We'll see what happens. Um, to me, this was more of figuring out what's gonna happen in Arizona. Uh, I think that they have some really great young talent. And I think that they could go somewhere, but these are the teams you have to beat. The Lions, the the people that's in your conference that's four favorite uh, to go to the Super Bowl. Guys are in a tough, in a tough division, pardon me, not conference. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But the Lion fans, Mason's right, it's going to take the playoffs. Like, we get it. We get the people are watching y'all. We get the people are on y'all. We get that y'all are getting some light on the organization. The objective is to win the championship. Let me ask you something, um, Mace. Who last year? Who played? Who did the Kansas City Chiefs play the year before last in the Super Bowl? Um, I don't remember everybody we beat. That's my point. Nobody cares. I don't remember. <laughs> they only yeah. know that who wants the Super Bowl. <laughs> the, yeah. The see, Eagles. Yeah. But oh, yeah, the when they was raving about Jalen Hurts. Yeah, but off the top of your head, you just don't. Yeah, well, you don't you, remember you don't, second you don't place. Know, man. So the point being is you have to win, and that's what really matters. And then the Giants beat the Browns 21 to 15. The Browns are one and two. How do you guys feel about the Browns losing to the Giants? Yeah, why are we even talking about these two teams? Like, if it's not a massage in New York, that's the only thing I would really. Why did you put this on this? That's that, important. Why? Because the Browns lost. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Browns is Deshaun Watson, right? Yeah. So why is this important? All people care about with Deshaun is, is there a massage going on? If there's not a massage going on, pause that he he's finding his way out of, people, people are really not focusing on it. And that's what you don't want your career to become, you know, link with scandal, where it's so scandal plague that people are not even paying attention to football. They're just trying to figure out what's happening in your personal life. So I don't really know. Yeah. Um, I think this was something to talk about because Deshaun Watson got $230 million guaranteed. He, he fucked the whole quarterback market up. Yeah, he to, ruined to, it. Yeah, to where all these owners <laughs> are probably pissed. And I remember when he was leaving – College, his coach was like, yo, whoever misses out on Deshaun Watson is missing out on Michael Jordan. And then when he got to the Texans, he was looking like Michael Jordan, a football we're talking about. And we was like, yo, this kid is going to be nice. And when he lost his receiver and he, he wanted to get a trade, all these scandals came out. The hand job shit came out crazy. When he was being quiet, and not mentioning shit, and before you request a trade, and I'm not saying this is right, wrong, or indifferent. It's definitely wrong. Let me change that. It's definitely wrong. These these hand job scandals was not coming out. You start pushing pushing the envelope down there in Texas with them good old boys, and he said, "Oh yeah, we got a plethora of hand job scandals that you're a part of." Fuck this shit up. And he's never recovered since, even with injury last year. And this year, he's not looking good. These are two, actually, two home losses that he has. On the other side of the coin, the Giants won a game. You know, yeah, um, Jones going da crazy. Da Daniel, Daniel Jones looking like he may have earned a little bit of that money that the Giants gave him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had two touchdowns, <laughs> zero interceptions, 236 passing yards. He looked like he, he deserved a little bit. <laughs> Be it as the Cleveland Browns. Eh. Now, we I didn't think the Cleveland Browns would start off bad either. I thought Deshaun Watson had time to heal from his injury. I thought that he would show up to training camp strong. I thought that Amari Cooper probably has a chip on his shoulder not staying in Dallas. I thought these two would be a dope tandem coming from two different teams in Texas that kind of gave them like, ah, get the fuck out of here vibes. I thought that they would be really good. It's not showing. Um, but the Giants actually won a game, and they're actually – 
tied with the Dallas Cowboys mm. in the division. More shit to talk about with <laughs> my nigga YSL Irvin yeah. when he gets on here. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, and I I think um when it comes to Deshaun Watson that he was going to have a great year. I think when his recent scandal came out, it just really just set him back a little bit. Well, and like I said, I'm not... Because he was making his way over all of the other ones, and then when a new one came out, it's just like, oh, they trying to make sure I don't play football. And, you know, he has some family things that take place. So prayers up for Deshaun Watson. I want to make sure he knows we're not just joking on you, but we got to cover what we got to cover. And that's what I was about to say. He has some family issues and so on and so forth. And I'm not making an excuse for that. But when you're out there, (laughs) (laughs) you got to come to work, bro. It's no excuse. (laughs) Hey, yo, look, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. And, And listen, and I'm not saying everybody's the same. Everybody has a different mourning process. My mom died last year. I took my time off. And I came to work. You ain't hear me after I hear me crying about it. No, and not and everybody's different. I don't want to seem insensitive. But once you get on the field or you step into work, people don't always want to hear that. They don't want to hear the sob story. I had to take my time off, and when I got myself together, I came back to work. I wasn't up here crying. Yo, my mom died this time and third. I had to make sure I was mentally ready. To come back to work. That makes sense. That makes sense. So you think he should have taken time off? What I'm saying is if you need to take time off, take time off. Because once you start saying that, people are going to look like, yo, he ain't ready, bro. His mom, yeah. I don't know if his father, I think, will pass yeah. away. And I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying people in general like, yo, bro, man, the nigga in this yeah, if you're not jobs, ready, is, don't suit up. Yeah, exactly. I could go with that. Exactly. So uh, I could go with that's that. all I'm saying, and I'm, I don't want to come off as sensitive, but when you have a fan base, especially with sports, they might take that approach, and they may be like, yo, that's what I mean, it is what it is. I'm just telling you, it's, it's honesty. I remember years ago, Shaq wasn't playing. I think his grandmother or grandfather died, and he came to the game late. In like third quarter and scored like 35 points and was pointing at the sky during the game because uh, he had to make sure he was ready to come back. And that's just one example that I'm using. And I do like, and I think it's okay to take time for yourself, especially if you need to get your mental right, because if everything else is blocking that, like do what you have to do, get yourself together and then you can come back. No, absolutely. Like, yeah. And, and like I said, everybody doesn't have the same grieving process. Yeah. Like I hate that shit. Like, and when I say grieving process, I hate when, like, a mutual friend may pass away and I don't go hang out with the other niggas, like, when he died, and be like, yo, you didn't come, man. You know, this the day so-and-so died. I don't really fuck with y'all niggas. I only fucked with y'all niggas because he <laughs> fucked with y'all niggas. <laughs> y'all, y'all niggas ain't really my <laughs> niggas. I don't, I don't want to mourn with y'all niggas. I want to mourn on my own side. So... <laughs> Everybody's process is different. Yeah, which is a great because I'm the same way. I have to be by myself. I don't want to be around a whole bunch of people. And that's okay. Do what works for y'all. Okay. We're going to go to break. When we return, we will discuss Reggie Bush. Don't go anywhere. Call this thing about it's toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about she it She wanna be free Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog picks of the day on Sunday. The Falcons will play the Saints. Underdog has Kirk Cousins at 228 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower mace? Mm. Higher. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go lower. Okay. 
Derek Carr is at 227 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower Cam? How many? 227 and a half passing yards. This is really a good, good quarterback matchup. I kind of, I'm going to give Kirk Cousins the edge pause. I'm not even talking about underdog for a minute. Pardon me for me on pick. But these are kind of like. The same? Yeah, like two mid yeah. upper. <laughs> Like not mid, mid but like mid, yeah, mid <laughs> mid upper quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? I'll give Kirk Cousins the edge on this, but this is like one of y'all niggas step out and be better than the other nigga. How many yards? 227 and a half. Derek Carr. Yeah. Hi. I'm gonna go lower. I'm gonna go lower. Okay, and then Bijan Robinson is at 72 and a half rushing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Um, lower. I'm going to go low as well. Hey, make sure to download the Underdog app and you can make your picks too. So Reggie Bush is suing USC, Pac-12, and NCAA for NIL compensation during his college career. So for context, Bush previously sued the NCAA for defamation after a spokesperson claimed Bush was involved in pay-for-pay arrangements. His lawyer said their goal is to correct this injustice and pave the way for a system where athletes are rightfully recognized, compensated, and treated fairly for their contributions. How do you guys think this whole thing is gonna go? Um, number one, I think I think um whenever systems change, there's things that need to be rectified. I know there's times where people feel like it's almost like marijuana, you know, people went to jail for marijuana, then it becomes legal then there's things that have to be changed because you have one person life that's railroaded for something that is legal now. Not, um, and I know some people may say, and I know I probably have been quoted on that as well as saying, well, when they did it, it was illegal. Now today it is legal. So that's that argument that we have to revisit the same way with sports. Now it's NIL deals before there was no NIL deal. So even though it's, legal today it was illegal when you did it you get what i'm saying and that's one aspect of it and i'm not saying i'm for or against either one of those marijuana or whatever i'm saying that the the concept is something that need to be revisited and when you're talking about this particular situation i don't believe the ncaa can afford to lose this battle to reggie bush because if they lose it, then it opens up a can of worms for everything else. Like if they lose this, you you know how many other people are going to want their NIL shares? Um, Fab Five, UNLV, Running Rebels. There's been some really popular athletes, Fire and Ice. Um, what's that? N- um, NC State. Um, what's his Mayberry and all of them in Arkansas, Collis Williamson. There was some really great um, college athletes that if they let Reggie Bush wins this, there there's a whole bunch of cash they're gonna have to cough out, and I don't think they're they're ready to do that. I think they're saying we gave y'all the nil deals, we've given back enough. Don't push it, but you know it's it's his choice and it's his lawyer choice to push the envelope, and we wish him the best. Man, I was actually going to say the same exact thing where we, the, act, the actual same exact thing that yeah. you said. Um, they're not going to let, the, I mean, I hope, he, I hope Reggie Bush gets his money. <laughs> Everything you said, I swear to God, is going to say the same thing. You know what kind of can of worms this are open? <laughs> yeah. The O'Bannon brothers sued. The O'Bannon brothers <laughs> need that money. The O'Bannon brothers, for those who don't know, because listen, I was young when they was playing. Google the O'Bannon brothers suing the NCAA. Not just that, they sued the video game for using their likeness on the video game and what they did was you have to pay everybody who was in that video game. So I think they, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, something that I would have to Google how much the old band and brothers got or one. Yeah. I think it was 30 million or something. But when they divided pay. it out, yeah, it was like, it was like 17, 17 cents. <laughs> yeah, it was it says they were the company was forced to pay sixty million after the lawsuit. Yeah, but how many? How much? Yeah, with all the players, players in the NCAA, players a judgment of twenty eight point one million for breach of duty. So the again? players were awarded twenty eight point one million. How many players? That's still the, finding that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's the point. 
you do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? You have to think about this. For the NCAA, just like getting a, a parking ticket. Oh, well, we'll pay whatever, 60 million. Get this over with. Get them out the way. We don't want this to drag out. So it looked like they paid a large amount of money when they're making billions of dollars. Yeah. So it's really not a large amount of money that they're paying. But the, for the sake of getting this over with, pay it. Uh, look, this is this is it's simple. Look, Mason, May, I swear to God, I was going to say the same thing. We wasn't legal at one time. It's legal now. And with the way they're co- trying to compensate for people who went to jail for weed, it's saying that, yo, if you want to sell weed legally, we'll let you skip the line and get your license ahead, mm. of, ahead of anybody else who's trying to get their license. So if you want to go get a dispensary or grow anything else and you have a felony for weed, you jump the line. But they not telling you the hurdles you got to go through or that you may have to have $6 million to get the license or everything else. But you can skip the line. Yeah. <laughs> but do you have all the necessary tools to get the license? And that's the thing about it. Uh I hope Reggie Bush does win, but at the end of the day, Mace just named a, not even 25% of the superstars that's going to come <laughs> out of the woodwork yeah. and ask for this money. I think that they'll say, kind of like the O'Banna situation, they'll make it 100 mil so it looks like we compensated them. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's the same thing like coming back to your car and you got a $55 ticket on it. And I'm not saying that's not a lot for certain people, but... If I got a $55 ticket, I'm just happy they didn't tow the car. Yeah. So that's my opinion. And then to answer your question, it was 24,000 college football and basketball players for the $60 million settlement, and the average player payout was around $1,600. So all that for 16 (laughs) (laughs) Niggas got video games of you. We have posters, your jerseys. Everything for $1,600. $1,600. And now mind you, this is literally probably 25 years after they're not even playing in college anymore. So, yeah. Wow. It's not even enough for rent. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And then he can't even get it a good, a good um, NCAA championship game with that. Hey, man, this is similar to me. This is how they're going to work it out. And then niggas will leave with 1600. I don't know this for a fact. But Reggie Bush is one of them people that's uh, one of these great college players that feel like he, you know, he got jerked because he was taking money. But we have to think about the people who wasn't taking money who could have made money as well. Not just because he took money. We could, this shit could go back decades to be yeah. like, yo, how are you going to pay him for taking money? but I did the right thing and didn't take money. <laughs> mm. I could have made this, that, and the third. So you're going to compensate somebody for at the time doing the wrong thing when I did the right thing. How does that work? <laughs> okay, so now moving along to WNBA. Asia Wilson became the second player in WNBA history to win the MVP award unanimously. It's her third MVP after winning in 2020 and 2022. Thoughts on her getting that award? Yeah, we kind of already knew she was going to get MVP. We've been talking about it and alluding to it all the way here. I mean, she got a perfect jab step. She got the perfect pull up, goes straight up when she shoot. And she shoot left hand, so her elbow is like all the way in. Uh, She just got a pure form, you know. I I think she'll be an MVP for a lot of years to come. I don't think this is the end of her getting MVP. I think when, but also when Angel Reese start getting to MVP um, level, she'll be the changing of that gods. I don't, I don't see anybody else for um, for running for that. I like silver hair Asia Wilson. <laughs> no disrespect, Bam. She's cute. So silver hair Asia Wilson, cutie pie. And no, that's showing love. 
Numbers is crazy, man. Numbers as well. She's averaging 26.9 points, basically 27 points a game, 11.9 rebounds, basically probably 12 rebounds a game, 2.3 assists, 1.8 steals, shooting on 51% from the field, really 52%, 51.8 from the field, 31.7% from three. These numbers are fucking crazy. Shout out to Asia. You deserve it. It ain't really much to say. But I will. the last thing I will say is that, um, like May said, this is kind of a foregone conclusion. But I really do love, it's a point in the season, you guys could go Google it, where she was trying to involve her team and not be the only one, and not saying her team ain't nice, not trying to be Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, so to speak, trying to make her teammates better around her. And that wasn't winning them games to where she was on the – podium after the game crying with her coach saying I just want to be the best teammate the best basketball player I could be and when she realized that shit wasn't cutting it she went into beast mode and started busting ass and that's the reason why she's the MVP again congrats Asia on your third MVP yeah and I think when it comes to her game also <laughs> is these three these three blocks per game three blocks per game and two steals per game, along with the points, is a lot for a person athletically. That means that they're fully engaged with playing defense, and she's playing both ends exceptionally well. And I think that's something that get overlooked. Because, I mean, even you, Killer, you used to get about two steals a game. Yeah. Two steals a game is a lot of energy. You know, just playing the lanes, being – that's a it's just a lot of energy. Anybody that played basketball knows it it would be like getting two interceptions a game. Yeah. You would you would call that person super nice, you know, if they get two in, interceptions and then three blocks. I mean that she's playing as good as the Kimbe as well as Kobe Bryant. The Kimbe and Iverson. You know, the steals is Iverson. The blocks is the Kimbe. And on top of that, getting 26 points or however many points you just named, that's a that's a great performance. Yeah. And to average, that means it's happening every single night. Some days it may be four assists. I meant four blocks. Yeah, and actually I had a quadruple double a couple times, which is nearly impossible to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's documented. Yeah. <laughs> All video. I mean, I had 10 steals in one game, you know? Yeah. Man, that's crazy, man. It's time I look back, man. What a life, man. <laughs> what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. You wasn't alive, I wasn't alive then, Stan. Yeah, man, she wasn't Crazy. there. You should have been alive, Stan. I don't want to pull out my footage like Larry Adrian. <laughs> this <is> Larry footage. <laughs> Larry, what is this, yesterday's league, Larry? Yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday league. league. What you do on Monday, Larry? But we did, yo, well, matter, matter of fact, that's actually your trophy. He bought it for you because. Oh, because, come on. Because it's the like, title town. Yeah, because it's the name of the team it is what it is. So they wanted to give the owners hey, the trophy. Hey, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, I forgot you brought the title home. So, yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I meant to I tell you. We did it. <laughs> 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 yeah, the she name would do it through this on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he don't like winning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but she would do it with yeah. the camera on. She would do it right. He <laughs> 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 don't like winning. He <laughs> said, <laughs> "Hey man, say man." You got any last words you want to say to Larry Sugar? Y'all <laughs> said on the mic. Y'all pulled a mic. <laughs> Run me, Pete. <laughs> well, yeah, murder. The yeah. Tuesday morning is what it is. Oh, Championship. Man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Larry. Yo, yeah. why does it say week starts again? Why does it say Division Two? Uh, <laughs> always division <laughs> one. <laughs> That's all them niggas. They can't right. never be satisfied. Yeah. Why? Why does it say division two though? Because it's like ten divisions in it. Like ten teams, ten different leagues. Okay. Should let me coach. Okay. Either way, it's legit. So it's shout legit. out to y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs>
Showtime, baby. Okay. And then obviously shout out to Asia Wilson. She's not even 30 yet, so her resume is only going to continue to get stronger. She's been having a great year like we discussed earlier, so I'm happy she for her. She just turned 28. Yeah. Fire. So I'm happy for, for her and ready to see what she continues to do. So now we got to discuss Caitlin Clark. She's the unanimous AP Rookie of the Year. The question is, was it ever a competition? I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm a, <laughs> since we're in title town, I'm going to keep it real because I do like Caitlyn, but I don't think this is unanimous. Now, come on, y'all. We know Angel Reese got hurt, <clears throat> but I think in all fairness, it should have been a co-MVP. I think it is impossible to say that she was unanimous because the numbers don't show that. Maybe the ratings show that, but the numbers don't show that. And I'm a big, you know, Kaylin Clark fan. She's wearing my number. But other than that, I can't say that she's a unanimous. Like with me, I, people count on me to tell the truth. And this is one of those times. I can't go with the populist statement because you're not unanimous. I don't care who said it. it that's not the unanimous um, rookie of the year. It should have been her and Angel Reese because if she was magic, I mean, if she was Larry Bird, Angel Reese was magic. They both had a, a good, I think even Angel Reese had a better rookie year, but she got hurt. And that's how we, how it spins. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Just on the eye test. I didn't look at all the numbers, but just by the eye test, Angel Reese was balling. I think that Caitlin Clark was the unanimous MVP. Just my personal opinion. I think that Angel Reese had better eyelashes and baby hair, and she looked good. And she was having 13 rebounds, <laughs> double double, sin, <laughs> sin mad at me. Because she talking about, wait, she, wait. She, cause she talking about she don't look cute. She don't think she should get an MVP. Yeah, she looked cute. <laughs> yeah, she was balling, but I really believe a lot of her rebounds and no disrespect to Reese. I think she's going to be one of these people that step into. Uh, age of spot as time goes along um getting better at shooting and so on and so forth uh right she averaged 19. oh um caitlin clark she averaged 19.2 points 8.4 assists 5.7 rebounds 1.3 steals a game oh yeah i think our numbers were tremendous saying for correct it we're not wrong that often. No. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta I think her numbers were outstanding. I think that Angel Reese had both of them. Every time we looked up, and I think that's a great assessment, which you did say, Murder, is that this was definitely a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson uh, situation, 100%. Uh, two things went into the fact that why I say uh, that it should have been unanimous. Uh, two, three weeks ago, I agreed with you. When you said that it should have been co-MVPs, I was of that mind state. And I remember maybe last year or when did Joe, year before last, when Joe LMB mm -hmm. won MVP and it was like a race between him and the Joker. And the Joker got hurt maybe the last eight, nine, ten games of the regular season. He didn't play because they wanted to make sure he was good for the playoffs and they ended up winning them a championship. Uh, you know my slogan, the best ability is availability. And you know it was coming down to a tight race between these two for MVP and Caitlin Clark finished the season up. And she finished strong. Not just finished the season strong, her team is in the playoffs right. as opposed to Angel Reese's team didn't make it to the playoff. I think that also factors in. Yeah, but that Angel, played into it. But a Angel Reese, you had an outstanding season. Not only just a right for rookies, she had the most rebounds in one season for a WNBA player, rookie or not, which is nothing to sneeze at. I'm looking forward to you coming back next year, uh, sweetheart, and having a great, great season. But my vote would have went to Caitlin Clark. And not just because of everything she brought to the game, the numbers and the numbers kind of speak for themselves. And not only the numbers, it's one of these situations where I think maybe the last time we seen this much pressure with somebody coming into professional sports may have been LeBron James. When everybody knows you're supposed to be that nigga, everybody knows wants to see what you're gonna do. Everybody wants to see if you're gonna live up to expectation, you're the chosen one, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't even think if I'm not mistaken, LeBron made it to the playoffs his first year. So um, my vote would have went to Caitlin Clark purely off that. 
You think next year she'll begin like 30? Um, I think she's getting more comfortable. It is, to me, I don't think it's about her scoring 30. I think whatever she has to do to win, that's what I think she's going to have to do to win. You got to think about it. She's she's almost averaging a double-double. Uh, 8.4 assists is tremendous. You know, I think if she gets one more player that they can make some noise. I think they're a player or two away. I mean, she made Aaliyah Boston look much better. I was all over uh-huh. dissing Aaliyah Boston at the <laughs> beginning of the season. Now it's looking like, okay, Aaliyah Boston. Okay. Yeah. She made her look better because she's mm-hmm. dropping dimes. Um, so I don't know if – I'm could she get 30? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will she have to get 30 for a team to win? I don't think so. But it's not far-fetched. We don't see her score over 30 multiple times on the collegiate level. And she's looked more and more comfortable as the season went along. Yeah, I think that Diana Taurasi statement aged very bad. Poorly, very poorly. Yeah. I'm uh, shout out to Trista. You know, uh, Trista sometimes fills in when Trista isn't here. And she called Diana Taurasi an old bag of bones, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just for this and Caitlin Clark. It's very disrespectful. <laughs> Old bag of bones is wild, man. Of course, she didn't get any run at the Olympics, but um, it didn't age well. You're right about that. Okay, and then the last one before we close. So the WNBA is expanding to Portland, Oregon by granting the league's 15th franchise to the city. This is in addition to a Golden State expansion and their first non-USA team coming to Toronto. So what does this mean for the league? Who's coming to Toronto? They're going to expand a team there. Who? The WNBA. No, I said, oh. Oh, he said, ooh. Um, And Portland? Uh, yes. And Caitlin Clark. Niggas is going to act like the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the least you can do is give her the, the rookie of the year. <laughs> All this is, but then look, now I know we're, we're not really focused on the game on the court, but we have to think about. Brand. She bought all this shit to yeah. the NBA. Look, y'all are flying on private jets now. You have the most sponsorship money since the WNBA started. Now we're doing expansion teams. It's purely off Caitlin Clark. And no disrespect to anybody else, but this is the hype that she bought. And I think that, you know what I really do about like about Angel Reese? Is that Angel Reese and whoever's in her corner know that it has to be a good guy and bad guy. She said that actually on one game. She's like, fine, you know, y'all all on Caitlin Clark and y'all this, that, and the third. I had to play the bad guy throughout college. I, I don't, And I don't mind that. If I had to play the bad, to be a good guy and bad guy, fine. But you know, sometimes you root for the bad guy. And she's not necessarily a bad guy. We're talking about figuratively yeah. speaking. Um, but she gets it. And I like that she gets it because everything is marketing. And Mace made a great reference earlier, and a lot of these kids are too young to know. And of course, I was a baby when this happened. But the way that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird saved the NBA, because the NBA was no ratings, no fans, everybody, they was fighting. It was druggies and alcoholics, so on and so forth. When you get these two great players that lift the brand up, it's crazy. And then when Michael Jordan came, he just took it to another level kind of like Hulk Hogan did the WWF. Caitlin Clark is actually doing this, and Angel Reese says, I don't mind being your counterpart. And that and that really gets more eyes on people like an Asia Wilson, who's been busting ass for mm-hmm. the last few years. So this is great, Oregon. Uh, Toronto, you said? Yes. Congratulations, because uh, women's basketball is sensational right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm not sure where 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 this puts Toronto, but I know it'll do well in Portland. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. I was gonna add this is great for the players because there's only twelve teams and there's twelve active players, so there's only hundred and forty four spots available. And the WNBA is so cutthroat, they wave players left and right. So this gives a lot more people the opportunity to actually be able to play now that they're gonna have fifteen teams. So See a lot more competition. Yeah. See a lot more girls, even and, coming from overseas. And, and stuff, more so. girls won't have to go overseas because now yeah. there's another team they could play with. Yeah. I, I remember when expansion teams first came to the NBA, you start seeing players that weren't that good be good on other teams, and that was a good thing to see. So it will be interesting to see how people play on those expansion teams. For sure. But that is all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. I'm
What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.